Hello and welcome. Uh, this is another 2-1 video that I'm going to shoot around dynamic inputs and outputs. This is a pretty cool feature. I've sort of showed dynamic inputs in a previous video, but it wasn't fully there in terms of implementation in the UI. So this is, in 2-1, it's fully flushed out, so I can kind of demo it. So I just want to reshow that, and then we'll look at dynamic outputs. All right, so I've got a high bike configuration, 2-1 running. So dynamic inputs are the ability to chain inputs. So it's the ability to say... Uh, I'm going to write a SQL query based on input that's coming from OPC UA or input that's coming from any other input source. So to demo that quick, I've got a SQL connection to a local SQL database, and I'm going to open up an input that I've already created. And let me just remove uh, the where clause initially. So I've got some tables in here. I have an assets table. I'll hit execute on that to return the first value, and you'll see there's just some asset information in here. So what I can do is, you know, this is just SQL, so I can write a where clause where asset ID is equal to uh, press one, and the same same result comes up. So instead of writing that in uh, statically, I can make it dynamic. So what I can do over here, I can grab any input. In this case, I've got an OPC UA tag that is linked. Uh, if I pull up my quick client, you can see this tax value is press three. So now that I put that in, when we, when we hit the execute button, we go out and read the OPC UA input, use that to fill in the query dynamically, and now we're querying for press three, versus if I went back into the OPC UA server and said press one again, and hit execute, now the press one comes back, right? So we can use information from some other source to drive our SQL query. So we also added this to REST. So I'll go into my REST connector input. And here I have this connected out to the webhook site. And what I'm going to do here is, if I just do a read input, uh, let's see, there it goes. You'll jump up here and see that, uh, so it issued this request. And all this webhook site does is just record what the request is. So there's a get request to this address. What I can do is I can add like a parameter equal to, and I'll do the same same thing. So I'm going to go into OPC. Uh, you know what, this time I'm going to grab the system time in seconds. doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, but we'll do it anyway, and I'll hit read. And again, no, no result's going to come back, right, because we're not making a really valid query. Webhook's acting a little weird, but the second one went through. Uh, and you'll see that asset ID equal to 53 in this case. That's just the system time in seconds. And you can see the query string has an attribute. The other place I can throw that is if I do a post, uh, I can just throw these references in here, the time in an hour, and I'll do the read again, and you'll see that the body now actually has the number three in it. So again, I'm using this dynamic input, which could come from other, any other input in Hybyte, uh, to drive the REST query or to drive the SQL query. And the applications for that are, you know, I have data in the PLC or I have data coming over an MQTT broker, and when I get that data, I want to then go, you know, drive a... Uh, a REST or SQL query to go get MES data, for example. It's the it's the work order information. I want to go get the, the details from the work order from SQL. So I'm going to use that tag to drag my, drag my SQL query. And what that really means in Hybyte is you end up uh, not needing to create you know, separate inputs for every asset or every work order. You can create a single input and then dynamically drive that uh, via an input from the system. So that's dynamic inputs. Pretty cool. The flip side of that is dynamic outputs, which is new in uh, two, two, one. So what this is doing is if I jump into my MQTT broker output, I go in here, you know, traditionally this has been a static syntax. We have supported the ability to put a hashtag in there and we'll put like a model or instance name. But what this is saying is this syntax says whatever you're sending through the output dynamically fill out the topic, right? So what in this case, I have a model here that has an asset ID column. I have two instances of that model defined. One of them is taking the asset ID from OPC, right from an OPC tag. The other one just has a default of press two. And what I'll do is I'll go create a flow, in this case, that takes the boiler one, and I didn't add, but I'll do it now, the boiler two, and sends it out that output. And we'll turn it on. And then we'll pull up our broker clear the messages, and what you'll see is that namespace is dynamically being populated with press two or press one 
depending on the instance being sent, right? So it's so this syntax again in the output is saying the output that is flowing through here, pull the asset ID out of it, right? And in one case it's press one, and in the other case it's press two in this example. So again, this dynamic output, this is this is a way to say, you know, I'm gonna, I've structured my input, I've modeled it, I know everything has an asset ID, or I want to put it in an ISA 95 structure of my topic path. Well, I can put in one or more of, of this kind of syntax uh, to make that path dynamic. So I only need to define a single output in high byte, and I can drive all my instances through that, and we'll dynamically fill out the output path for you just to simplify things and make it easier to scale. So this could, you know, you could do multiple. I could have a site ID, although I don't have that, so this won't work in my example. You know, we could section that out or maybe use underscores or, or, or whatever your syntax is, right? But it helps you kind of tailor that topic namespace, which is really important, you know, when you're talking about a UNS. Uh, the other one, so we added that same feature. The last thing I'll show is to REST output. So if I go to the output of REST, similarly in the, uh, in the URL, we don't have the ability right now to, to set the body directly, but in the URL, you can add the asset ID as an output parameter, right? So if I go uh, to, I'll shut this MQTT flow off, and I'll go to REST, and I'll do the same thing. I'll add in Boiler2 and send that out, the REST flow. Turn it on, and what we'll see is, we'll see two posts. One comes through with press one, another one right after that comes through yeah, let's see if we can catch it with press two. So again, we're dynamically filling out that URL based on the data that's passing through the output. So really a, a cool way to minimize configuration. You don't have to define an output for every single asset. You can define one output and dynamically fill out information uh, as it flows out. So pretty cool. So that's that's all new and uh, most of that, the output stuff is new in 2.1. Uh, hopefully you can use it in a pretty cool feature to kind of slim down uh, your projects and help you scale faster.